Okay, hello everybody. We've got the new version of Gaia, Bleeding Edge version 1.3. And uh, just another note, I'm changing the method by which I record things. Um, I've got a ACG mode turned on on this to see if I can get it to auto levels. Hopefully this won't blast the, uh, the audio and create any pops or clicks. So we're gonna attempt it. If it sounds like poop, you'd let me know, and I will go back to the old methods. Um, this here is the splash screen that you usually start up with um, if you're starting up 1.3, and I just had to bring it up as an image because I needed to scale down uh, from my ultra-wide. Uh, I don't fig figure people want to have ultra-wide videos, so to keep this at a 1920 um, essential resolution to the side here i had to scale it down and you can't change the interface while this is up so uh, as a starting point you can start off with a blank or a landscape or the classical mountain various other modes here when you first install uh, gaia 1.3 uh, because it's bleeding edge it will also give you an option to uh, install to a new folder um, you have in the little dialog of where it's going to, by default, it will automatically actually create a bleeding edge folder inside the main Gaia folder. So I just left it at that. And uh, I'm able to run version 1.2 and version 1.3 at the same time. But just in case, it's always a good idea to go ahead and back up that folder before you do the install, just in case something happens. And then uh, if, if an issue comes up, or um, if you haven't kept the original 1.2 install, um, which you can also download now again from the uh, the website if you need to, but just to make sure that that's also secure, you know, making that backup is a good idea. Uh, so I'm running both 1.2 and 1.3, and that's pretty important because despite all the cool new features that come with this, version 1.3 does have some um, elements that will break old files. There are some major changes and uh, the team has gone in and made a lot of big cuts to the main code in order to make it more efficient, more stable, uh, faster. And uh, some of the workflows are changed a little bit again for the same reasons, right? Uh, get them faster, get them more efficient and maybe increase uh, the ability of the node. With that, it means that these sort of things can um, change the look of what you're dealing with. So if you're very sensitive to the values in the previous version, and then you bring and load this over into the new sets of nodes, uh, it can drastically change the look of your terrains. The suggestion there, of course, from them is to uh, export different points of your nodes where if you want to use something that's unique in version 1.3, uh, say a one of the new um, fractals or some of the adjusted nodes, new features in some of the nodes, then um, exporting that as an EXR and then bringing it across will be the ideal solution to that. And so that's something I do normally. Um, I've done that in my previous job where uh, I had trains that had to have variations on them that were still based on the same base form. So I would build the base form, export that, bring it in, and then do my variations uh, like that. And that way, when I wanted to blend between them in game, then they, uh, they all looked like they kind of were built off the same base shape, which uh, made it look a lot nice nicer. So... Um, give you a really good idea of just how fantastic this is to get your hands on you know this bleeding edge version 1.3 I want you to think about you know what's been happening over in India where the, the team is uh, dealing with uh, cyclones and various tropical storms uh, stuff that has actually damaged their equipment where they've had to go in and you know deal with this the pandemic which has been incredibly dangerous a lack of vaccine over there um, the riots and all this stuff is going on in their lives uh, on top of, you know, the regular stresses of being a small team, trying to, you know, keep up with with all their their goals. Um, they've uh, they've managed to prevail and, and get this into our hands. So uh, huge respect for me to the team to be able to, to put that forward. Um, this uh, also, there, there was a change in, in some of the things that they were intending to do. So if you've been following them on 
their their web forum. They have uh, talked about you know features that they wanted to add to this, and one of the things that wasn't previously mentioned but is here is that actual cutting out of uh, big chunks of old code and rewriting it from scratch so that it is more stable, more efficient, faster, uh, and just overall better. It's a really great choice and it's a really hard choice to make, honestly, when you're working with this because it's it's a big deal. It takes a long time to be able to rewrite a big chunk of core code that you know makes your software even work, let alone, you know, uh, features and, and the like, and then making sure that that all works with everything that you've already had established along here. So this is a really big deal. And there are a ton of new nodes, um, well, uh, quite a few big change nodes. So things like uh, sand here, where if we just drag this out and take a look, this is a completely new fractal that is added to the system. So. Um, some of these things are uh, new workflows. Uh, there's new starting points. Let me just bring this down a little bit. And I will be digging into a lot of these uh, new features. So just the change list is massive. Um, and we'll, we'll go through these in separate videos so that we can dig through the settings and how we can use them and what they might be useful for. To give you just a general, in this video at least, a general kind of overview of some of the uh, the changes and just kind of look at what's going on here. Um, there aren't a ton of changes, but uh, something like the build, for example, there isn't currently any tiled build options and they will be coming back. Um, that's, that's not a question. It's just that in this, again, bleeding edge version right now, they're not available. So like I said, they, they went in and they've added a bunch of new features. They've changed a lot of the, the core code and core functionality of this stuff. And now it's time for uh, us, the users, to do some testing, send them some bug reports, um, and keep them kind of aware of, of how it's working in our space. Remember that any software being used on a variety of different platforms. Even if you're, if you're dealing with, you know, Windows, you have different graphics cards, uh, different CPUs, different motherboards, and all of these things can lead to different changes in how the software responds on them. And they're a tiny team and they have limited resources. So it really does uh, depend on, on you, the user, to make sure that you get the best software that you can from this, this group. So I personally love Gaia. I think it's a fantastic tool. I use it all the time for a lot of the things that I do. And so whenever I get, you know, a crash or if I just uh, stumble across a bug, I'm I'm emailing the team. I'm sending in that that bug report, letting them know as detailed as possible what's going on. And if it crashes, I click that little button to send it to them. Um, what uh, what is a a change in that? A section here is that you notice that there is no send data to the quad spinner team anymore. So if we dig through these, that's no longer a feature. So it really does depend on you, you know, doing that yourself. Um, with regards to this, um, a lot of uh, this is the same. There's not any major changes going on here. So um, when you do install Bleeding Edge, however, if there's some some things that you like. So like say the node style or connection style or whatever that you want to uh, to set back up, you'll have to set that back up uh, as well as you know your navigation and so on. So I just made a few adjustments to mine. And um, other than that, uh, what else have we got? We've got our, uh, our orbit mode and our first person mode up here. We've got our 2D view, which you can turn on and off. Uh, we've got our uh, show raw data um, and just look at it has the same amount of options uh, so I might have to dig through that and see what what's going on there over here we've got a lot of the same sort of things um, areas where people get sometimes confused 
is of course the mask display options. So if you're getting like multicolor masks or, you know, this was one sometimes people stumble on, which is an older version. Uh, it's sort of like a heat map kind of view of the stuff. Just keep in mind that when you're viewing your masks, if you see something like that, that's probably what's going on instead of the black and white. Another thing that you might stumble across is of course the train preview. Um, instead of just being like a regular gray kind of color, which is this white right here, then you can have, you know, multicolored uh, setups. And that's not necessarily something that's going to export. That's just sort of a preview mode. And it can interfere with other things like colors and masks and whatnot. So just be aware that if you do change this, this is not the way to color your terrains. This is just a way of previewing it without having to do texturing first. Um, and then we have our uh, atmospherics that we can turn on and off. And uh, let's turn that off there. Uh, also missing here is the water that was there previously. And so that's no longer a current option. That was a work in progress that uh, was stuck in a, a state of, you know, work in progress. So the uh, the new nodes just do a reference point to uh, lakes and sea, and that'll just be a blue color to give you an idea of where those things sit in space. Um, remember, this is not a final render tool. This is meant as something that you export to another piece of software, and then you put in your water uh, planes and your skies and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, getting the possibility of being to um, have a, like a, a proper preview um, is something that we probably will see more of uh, moving forward. But um, you have things like the, uh, the light node that will do a better render of lighting and shadow so that you can bake that into the train if you want, or if you wanted to do like a more um, render style uh, look at your train within the software, that's something that you can do. Um, some really cool new features that are available are things like these utilities down at the bottom. We'll be going through those, but the uh, loop end and loop begin is super cool. Maybe we'll take a quick look before the end of this video. Um, we have a new seamless mode. Where are you? It's in here. There it is, seamless, which makes seamless, uh, textures. So you drop it on any kind of train and it will fix your edges and then create something that is completely tileable, which is super cool. And then a few uh, new pieces, like I said, the, the new sand, uh, the, the Gabor node, uh, which is another um, fractal. Then we have things in here, like uh, we still have dunes, that go along with the sand, but we have a uh, rocky and slump and uh, hill, um, and then the ones that we've had before. Uh, some of the depreciated, depreciated nodes are uh, nodes that you can use this tool set for. So things like the invert node, for example, you're not going to find in here any longer. It is uh, something that you should do from this adjustment panel here because there's no real benefit to uh, putting it directly in. So if you want to invert a node, you just do it on the node itself. And that just saves, you know, space in the uh, long growing list of, of different nodes that are available. Um, I think that is mostly it for the, uh, the big changes or the big noticeable changes anyways. Um, we have a sample height button here that I haven't noticed before. So that looks like a new feature if I want to sample height from something, although I don't know specifically what it's going to give me. Um, if I turn that on, it tells me just how high in supposed meters. This is all arbitrary uh, anyways. When you're taking something off to a piece of software, you can change the scale up and down. So this is... Uh, this is just kind of a, uh, in this software, this is what it's meant to represent. Um, 
we have uh, pass up optimizer on by default, so it's going to optimize my memory. You can toggle this off if it impacts your performance. Um, we have a suspend engine, so that's the, that's uh, previously up here in a, another version. So this will stop the engine if it's uh, going through and churning through something while you want to make changes. So when you stop this, it'll stop calculating, and then you can make changes in here and then start the engine again. It's giving you information about build time statistics, uh, and uh, currently used disk space for caches, and then the currently uh, allocated memory. So we've got some, some nice options for being able to see what's going on and uh, how things are working within the scene. Lots of things that are familiar, right? Your preview as well as your, your quality settings. And uh, yeah, that looks like it's about it. So in another video, I'm gonna be digging through uh, the individual new nodes and uh, features and we'll, uh, We'll have a good play with those. So that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.